Well, good afternoon. Joining me today are Council President Sherry Leitner, Council Member Lori Zaff, and our city's public utilities director, Hala Razak. For years, our city has responded to drought conditions by reducing our water usage. And San Diego has been and continues to be a statewide leader, cutting water use by double digit figures since 2007, the last time our state faced a severe water crisis. But the past four years of unrelenting drought and near record heat are moving California into uncharted territory. Last week's unprecedented executive order by Governor Brown will require San Diegans to come together and cut water use like never before. Immediately following the governor's announcement, city staff began working with our water suppliers and state regulators to determine the next steps and ensure that San Diego is complying with the state mandated water reductions. The State Water Board is expected to finalize mandatory levels for the City of San Diego in early May next month. But we are not waiting until then to cut our water usage. Today I'm announcing four initial steps to curb water use and help San Diegans conserve. First, to meet Sacramento's water reduction mandate, I have directed the City of San Diego's Public Utilities Department to strengthen enforcement of water waste regulations. City staff will be issuing formal warnings and fines for water waste violations. And I encourage all San Diegans to use the Waste No Water app on their smartphone to help report and stop water waste. Second, the governor's executive order prohibits using potable water to irrigate landscaped turf medians. Turf landscape mediums do not, that do not use recycled water will go brown to comply with the order. Trees located in those medians will continue to be irrigated only as necessary to ensure that we keep them healthy and prevent potential public safety hazards that can occur from dying trees. And third, I believe that our city government must lead by example. And to achieve this, I'm reviewing options to cut the city's municipal water use. One of our city's largest water uses, not surprisingly, is our Park and Recreation Department. And this department has the responsibility of maintaining and operating one of the nation's largest municipal park systems. The system includes more than 9,000 acres of developed parks representing our regional community and our neighborhood parks. In anticipation of potential state mandates, several weeks ago, I directed the Park and Recreation Department staff to identify specific measures to reduce potable water use. Staff is reviewing these options, which may include cutting back or eliminating watering in small and passive parks, reducing potable water use at all city golf courses, and evaluating existing turf areas for replacement when appropriate and funding available. And I will be announcing specific actions to reduce water use at city parks in the coming weeks. Drastic water reduction at this level ordered by Governor Brown and the state is, of course, no easy task. And so the fourth and final of these initial actions is providing incentives from the city of San Diego to help our neighbors, our water customers, use less. Effective April 15th, the city is restarting its turf replacement rebate program. This program provides a rebate to residents who invest in replacing their water inefficient turf with native and or drought tolerant landscaping. $200,000 has been aside until June 30 and a quarter million dollars will be allocated in the proposed budget <clears throat> that I will be releasing next week. San Diegans can visit wastenowater.org for more details on how to qualify. These actions <clears throat> join the mandatory use restrictions most of which have been in effect in San Diego since November 1st. And as just as a reminder, these include no irrigation during rain or within 48 hours of a measurable rainfall. Second, the requirement to re immediately repair all leaks. Third, using recycled water for construction 
when available. Fourth, only serving and refilling water at restaurants upon request. And fifth, watering only three days that are assigned per week. And of course, most San Diegans have been dutifully complying with these issues. I want to remind all San Diegans that one of the simplest ways to reduce cut water use is to reduce outdoor irrigation. The best way to lower your water numbers is to dramatically reduce how much water you use for your lawn or your gardens. We must and we will respond to the current drought and make the necessary reductions in an effort to meet Sacramento's reduction mandate. But I want to reiterate that San Diego is already taking proactive measures to ensure long-term reliability of our water supply. It's with the support of the City Council, we are aggressively moving forward to implement Pure Water San Diego. It's one of the largest recycling projects being proposed in the nation. This multi-phase capital program, after full implementation, will provide one-third of San Diego's water needs. The city, of course, is still working with state and federal regulators to gain approval and environmental review. Financing and construction is currently scheduled to take several years. But water conservation in San Diego is a way of life, and the drought will continue to change our way of life, requiring a greater focus on conservation and sustainability. <clears throat> but this one thing is certain. San Diego will continue to endure. We will continue to do our part, just as we have in every drought our state has faced. We are committed to continuing to be a statewide leader in smart water use. We've done it before, and we will do it again. Now I'd like to introduce our council president, Sherry Leitner, to give a few remarks. As many of you know, I've been working on the city's water policy since I took office in 2008. I firmly believe that we can solve this problem, but I don't think that any one solution is the answer. It's going to take multiple solutions, and everyone is going to need to pitch in if we are going to reduce our water usage. As Mayor Faulkner mentioned, I agree that our residents in San Diego have already done a phenomenal job of reducing their usage. And I'm not sure if we can ask them to do more. Governor Brown has enacted more extreme measures. Fortunately, here in San Diego, we are already meeting or exceeding many of these goals and have been for years. So with our grass already dying and our low flow toilets and low flow showers already in place, what are our other options? I would like to see the city implement even more of the recommendations provided by the Water Policy Implementation Task Force, including continued rebates for rain barrels, as well as new incentives for gray water systems, the installation of smart irrigation systems, and the use of xeriscaping. Our stormwater division is exploring opportunities with stormwater capture and reuse. We need to increase and expand the use of the purple pipe system, which has the capacity to provide water to additional commercial clients, multifamily units, park schools, and to provide for right-of-way irrigation. Multiple local businesses have requested to use the purple pipe system, and we need to invest in the infrastructure to make that happen. This isn't just about the city. This is a statewide level emergency. More desalination plants are going to be needed. We will be keeping a close eye on the plants in Carlsbad and the one planned in Camp Pendleton as they come online and must seriously consider another plant in the San Diego region to help increase our local water supply. The city needs to lead the charge in finding a myriad of solutions for both residents and businesses that will help solve this problem so we can show the state that we are serious about conservation. Water is too important to our economy and quality of life to not pursue all options to secure an affordable and reliable water supply in the face of this continuing drought. And by all options, I mean reuse, stormwater capture, the recycle use that we've talked about, desal, everything we can possibly do 
Thank you. I'd now like to hand it over to Council Member Zaff. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. My, how things have changed in such a short time. It wasn't very long ago, hello, that we were actually thinking that we had a, a good uh, El Nuno coming our way, but uh, that just hasn't transpired. Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor, for all that you're doing. Um, you know, San Diego has taken uh, a leadership role statewide, and San Diegans have really uh, done everything that they can to reduce water. We know about uh, not running anything but a full load for in our dishwasher, in, in our laundry, and uh, we've put in more drought-tolerant plants than ever before. But unfortunately, we are in such a serious critical condition that we are asking San Diegans to dig a little deeper, do a little bit more. And um, uh, you've already heard from uh, our mayor and council president some of the steps that the city is taking, including stopping putting drinking water on our uh, landscape medians and taking a good look at our park and rec department and our water usage wherever we possibly can. We will be stepping up enforcement to disincentivize water wasters, people who are not following these mandatory water restrictions. I would also like to encourage all the HOAs out there to please reevaluate your landscaping and do what you can. Take advantage of our, our new program or the one that we're kickstarting again on our turf program and try and put in more drought tolerant. If every HOA uh, took some action, we, we would um, make some progress here. Um, we're also asking San Diegans to please be the eyes and ears out there. We have a, a lot of different um, opportunities. We have the Waste No Water app. It's free and it's available on both iPhone and Android. Uh, we have a number to call to report any water leaks or emergencies. Uh, that is 619-515-3525. You can also find it on the city's website and an email, uh, wastewater at sandiego.gov. You know, every single drop of potable drinking water that we don't use to wash our cars, water our lawns, fill our pools, means thousands of gallons of water um, that will be available for us to fight fires. We don't know what's coming our way. We need water to grow food. We need water to drink. So uh, if everyone does their part, we can save a, a lot of water for the very essential things that we need in life. So we're just asking our... Um, our community to make smart choices so that we will have a water supply when we need it. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member. Mm -hmm. And uh, <clears throat> Holla will be available to answer uh, any specific questions you may have. I'm happy to answer any questions that anybody has at this point. Yes, sir. So the restrictions don't really change so much for residents, it's more for the city because we had these restrictions in place a few months ago as well. Yes, that's true. And, and, and really, we're obviously reminding folks um, that it's important that we adhere to those restrictions. We're going to be getting our uh, final targeted amount from the State Water Board, as we said, in just about four weeks from now. Uh, that will determine future next steps as well. Yeah, go ahead. Um, last year, Governor Brown had asked for 20% cutbacks. What, at what number of savings were we at then? Um, are we at 4%, 5%? You know, I'll let, I'll let Hala answer that question, but I, as I mentioned earlier, since 2007, um, San Diego has reduced its water use by double digits. And I think that's remarkable as we're you know, standing here where we are today. Um, San Diegans have been conscious about this. The council member talked about, you know, whether it's low flow toilet shower heads. Uh, incentives are very important, which is why I'm reauthorizing the turf rebate program. You'll see additional dollars for that in the budget and beyond. Um, so we want to give people the opportunity. Uh, to do the right thing and continue uh, those savings because we've done it and it continues to be a way of life for, for San Diegans. Yes, sir. Mr. Mayor, several months ago when you <coughs> announced the mandatory levels, I feel like you also announced that these fines and warnings. So I'm just trying to understand what has changed exactly with Great your question. enforcement procedures because you had the authority back then to issue fines and warnings. Yeah, the last several months we've really had a focus on education. But Hala, let me uh, turn it over to you. Yes, so la the last few months, since um, since November 1st, when we went into the drought alert condition, we have been, um, we've stepped up our efforts on the enforcement. But as the mayor mentioned, we really concentrated on the education. So when we would receive a complaint, we would then write a letter and give uh, folks a couple of weeks to respond to that. Uh, with the second complaint, we make sure that 
we see somebody in face and, and tell them that they really need to fix this and give them an additional period of time. Uh, and then if that that if it's not resolved, then we refer that to code enforcement and code compliance. Well, what we're doing right now is that we will be more active out there, um, driving the streets and um, making sure that people are following the rules, as well as if we see any violation or on the first contact, we uh, want to give a notice of violation, basically a formal warning and then give, depending on what the violation is, an amount of time, then we will check back. If things are not collected, that's when a citation would be issued. All right, so instead of a three-strike rule, it's more of a two-strike. Correct. And is, is there going to be additional city staff to do that enforcement, or how will that yes. work? Yes, yes, uh, there will be additional city staff. We're looking at how many folks we still we need more right now. Is it going to be in public utilities, or is it going to be in the code enforcement department? public utilities working in partnership with code enforcement. Have you issued any fines since November 1st? No, we have not. How about how many uh, complaints have you received? Over 990 complaints. And uh, how many of those 990 went to, I guess, the second tier, one away from? I'd fine? say about 20% of those. Only 20%. Okay, so 80% of people generally get the message right away. Yes. People have been wonderful. San Diegans have really stepped up and, and taken care of things. Other thoughts or questions, guys? Have you guys, um, the mayor and council, put in drought landscaping at your home? Certainly, it's something that uh, we'll let everybody speak uh, individually. In my household, we continue to monitor our water use and, and reduce it uh, significantly. Um, we will continue to do that and uh, not only not watering portions of, of my own personal landscaping, but uh, that's just a way of life, I think, for most San Diegans. I don't know if anybody else wants to sure. I have quite a large property. I lost two trees during the last year because of not watering. I have managed to take out all the grass and I'm working on putting in vegetable gardens, but that will still take a while to get done completely. I was never more thrilled to let my lawn die. <laughs> and not have to mow it again. We gave the lawnmower away, and uh, so we, we took out all of our grass and we put in uh, drought tolerant in the front and backyard. So um, it was a, a wonderful day when I no longer had to put drinking water on my grass. So you guys understand kind of the work that it would take for a resident to do what yes. you're asking for them to do? Yes, yes. absolutely, yes. Mr. Yep. Mayor, what would be the practical effect of these cutbacks on parks? Are we gonna see parks go brown and golf courses go brown? Very likely. Yes, in certain in certain uh, areas. That's one of the things that I've asked the um, the park and rec is to give us our um, give us our options on how we do that. Certainly, it will be reduced watering. Um, and we'll focus on keeping obviously our regional uh, play fields turfed. If we have so many leagues and others that participate on that, uh, but there's no doubt that when you look at the city's water use as an organization, uh, one of our largest is our park and rec department, and and rightfully so. Can you explain yes. a little bit more about the turf uh, rebate program? Is that going on now or? Yeah, Helen, why don't you? Uh, yes. So the turf rebate program, there are several levels, um, several agencies, and um, with these agencies, sometimes it's grant funding, sometimes it's their own funding that they're putting in. Right now, Metropolitan Water District does have a turf replacement program, and it's a dollar twenty-five. Um, actually, it's two dollars per square foot. Uh, the City of San Diego, as the mayor mentioned, April fifteen, we are going to restart the program at a dollar fifty per square foot. So when you put the two together, it's a three fifty, uh, which is really a, a big chunk of the cost of replacing a turf with. Uh, drought tolerant plants. So it kind of combines between them yes. and the city. And when you say restart, when was the last time the city had the program? Well, we ran out of funding. There was so much interest in the program that we ran out of fu our funding a few months back. But we've been really lucky. We were able to uh, identify some more funds and we're restarting the program again. We do hear from residents, though, that say they try to get the rebate and they can't ever get it. Uh, so how much, I mean, like, how many residents do you think can be actually served by the $200,000? Like now, when you say, um, well, we are going to, um, depending on the size of their lot, of course, and how much they are willing to do, um, we are going to monitor the interest and in the use and continue to look for both grant funding and some other funding that might be available. 
And Holly, too, I just wanted to ask about the water main, you know, the city wastes 7 million gallons a year with the broken water mains. So can residents be assured if they go to all this trouble to put in a drought landscaping that the city is going to equal measures to make sure that money doesn't, the water doesn't get spilled out in these water main breaks? Absolutely. We're doing everything that we can on our end uh, for any leaks that are out there. Uh, of course, sometimes there are main breaks that are outside of our control. But as you know, we have a very robust main replacement program to try and update the system so that the system works properly. Artificial turf, is artificial turf included in the rebate? Part, uh, it's included in the metropolitan, in the MWD rebate, and we will make it included in the city as well. Last question? Um, are there any changes in the fines? Should, will residents expect more? No. Thank you again, guys. We'll, uh, as I said, these are uh, important reminders and, and initial steps and uh, to be continued. Thank you.